96. The first finalist presenting will be the Imperial College of London. Please welcome them. Right. 
Thank you, Farah. Our design is based on a large population of molecules. A crucial advantage of this is that it reduces the influence of stochastic noise on our system. We've chosen to use population dynamics, as this gives us access to a large library of well-characterized models, some of which are known to oscillate, and an interesting class is predator-prey predator dynamics. So in short, we're making a molecular predator-prey oscillator. So possibly the most famous textbook example of an oscillating model is the lox volterra model. It consists of two differential equations, where x is the prey population and y is the predator. Um, we can use the example of rabbits and foxes. So now there are four terms in this equation. We've got prey growth, which is dependent on the prey population. The population is controlled by killing of the, by the predator population. An effect of this is that the predator population itself will grow. And then finally, the predator population is itself controlled by its own death. So can this system fill our specifications? Oh. And we did, some, we, did some we did some modeling, and the answer to that is yes, it can. It produces an oscillating output, which can have, as long as you can have any parameter, you can have any wave, any amplitude, and any frequency. So it's, fulfills our, it fulfills our specifications. Now, we want a molecular system. So we're going to replace the rabbit with molecule A and the fox with molecule B. So now we've got these populations of molecules which will oscillate in our system. And then we have to turn these ecological principles into biochemical principles. So prey growth becomes self-promoted expression of A. Prey killing by predator is now degradation of A by B. Predator growth is now expression of B by the A-B interaction. And predator death is degradation of B. So we've got to take these biochemical properties and convert them into a, and I'll uh, show you a diagrammatic version. So here we have self-promoted expression of A, degradation of A by B. This, this interaction produces more B, and then finally B will degrade. So this should show a locked or terror like oscillation. Now the key to our system is we've taken these, this dynamic and split it up into two cells. So now we have the prey generating machinery inside the prey generator cell and the predator generating machinery inside the predator generator cell. So what this does is it means we can change the parameters by changing the population sizes of these two populations of bacteria. So we can ch and change the parameters change the output. So we can change the output by altering cell ratios inside our system. So um, a, a minor constraint in that is we have to have some kind of communication between the cells. So molecule A has to be able to get into the predator cell. So also, as I'm sure you're aware, the bacteria will grow, and that will, that will change our parameters. So we've got to keep these population sizes constant. So we're using a machine called a chemostat, which I'll touch on later. But first, we'll look at cell-cell communication. We've achieved this through quorum sensing. So it was discovered in a bacteria called Vibro fischeri, and you've got a gene called Luxar, which will um, uh, create a protein called Luxar, which can bind AHL, and AHL is a small diffusible molecule here. So this complex will then activate the Lux promoter, causing Lux I to be expressed, and Lux I is an enzyme which creates more AHL. So, uh, so that's it. That's, uh, and then um, in Bacillus, or in other bacteria, we've got a gene called AIA, which creates an enzyme which will destroy AHL, so it can quench the system. So these have been taken but from nature and put into the registry in the form of biobricks, so we can now arrange them into our new system. An example of this is the AHL receiver, which has been made previously. So, right, we've got to design the prey generator. So our required dynamic is self-promoted expression of A. We have some useful biobricks, and we've made this, um, this piece of DNA here. So TET-R will, will cause a constant expression of Luxar in our cells. So Luxar is, there's a constant amount of Luxar. Luxar will bind to AHL. This will bind the Lux promoter and transcribe Luxi, which is an enzyme that makes more AHL. So you get AHL produced under it self-promoting itself. So there's a positive feedback loop here. So we've met that, met that criteria. Now we'll look at the, prey the predator generator cell. So we've got three different dynamics this time. Expression of B by the A-B interaction, degradation of A by B, and degradation of B. So we've got some useful biobricks again, and we've made this. So first we'll look at expression of B by the A-B interaction. So we've got a sensing part. So AHL will diffuse into the cell, bind Luxar. Then um, this complex activates the Lux promoter, produces more Luxar. So the amount of Luxar in our cell increases like the predator population will. So we've met this, met this criteria here. Then we've got to have killing. 
So when this promoter is activated, the gene AIA is expressed, and you get AHL lactinase, which will destroy the AHL. And the amounts of these two chemicals inside the system will be the same, or be, no, not the same, be in proportion. So the killing is proportion to the size of the predator population. So we've met degradation of A by B. And finally, as you're aware, all these proteins will degrade. So we've got degradation of B. So now if you look at the system overview, we've got our prey generator cell. These proteins remain inside the cell at all times, and only AHL can diffuse between the cells. So we have this extracellular pool of AHL, which will oscillate. Um, all right, so I mentioned earlier we've got to keep the population sizes constant. So we're running our system in a chemostat, which has a growth chamber here. And you've got the two different types of cells inside it. And fresh media run, washes in, and the waste washes out. And this waste contains cells. And the rate of cells being removed from the chemostat by washout is exactly equal to the rate of cell growth inside the chemostat. So the population sizes remain constant. Also inside this, this washout is all the proteins inside our system. So rather than waiting 24 hours to degrade for AHL lactinase to degrade, AHL lactinase is washed out of our system and it has a half-life of 20 minutes instead of 24 hours. And we can change this half-life by altering the rate of washout so we can change the degradation rates inside our system. So just to show you a, a possible output, if you have this cell population, you'll get this, at this output. Then if you force a change in the population, say by pouring a large amount of the prey molecule generator into our system, you'll change the cell ratios and then you'll change the output signal. So I've summarized our design and now we've got to check this is feasible. So we'll ask the modeling people to, so we'll ask Kristin to explain the modeling. As you can expect from the design of our system and the split up of the predator into a sensing and a killing part, we now have a system that is no longer true Lotka Volterra, but more complex. Instead of two equations relating to the system, we now have three equations. The variations of the molecules HL, the prey, LOX R, the predator sensing, and AIIA, the predator killing, um, are described with this model. These variations are described by, on the one hand, by a growth term as well as, as a degradation term. The growth term of these molecules is solely due to gene expression. The degradation term of AHL, the prey, is due to an enzymatic reaction as well as due to a general degradation term which relies on the washout of the chemostat. This degradation term also affects the predator terms. Since we now have a diff more complex model, we have to ask ourselves, can this model give us oscillations? We carried out a full theoretical, uh, full theoretical analysis and found the answer. Yes, we can. Better still, we have total control over frequency, and we have a large control over amplitude of the oscillations. However, our theoretical analysis also showed that our system can operate in two different modes. In the first mode, our system operates as an oscillator. As you can see in the phase diagram of predator versus prey, we have um, the system converging to a unit limit cycle, regardless of the initial conditions. This will give us oscillations. However, in the second mode, our system will converge to a un unique steady point. And this means that after an initial time, all the concentrations of the molecules will um, reach a constant value and we will not get oscillations. With our analysis, we determined the subspace of parameters for which our system will be able to operate in the first mode as an oscillator. So now what we have to do is to have a closer look at the parameters of our system. Here again, the system model that we have. And we can see, we will see that, that we have three different types of parameters. A, B, and C are population-dependent parameters. E, D1, and D2 are washout-related parameters, which are due to the washout of the chemostat. And finally, we have A0, B0, and C0, which are constants. We found out that for any value of the constants A0, B0, and C0, we will be able to get combinations of the population-dependent as well as washout-related parameters, such that we can um, have our system operate in the, in the first mode and give oscillations. 
So, in other words, if we change our uh, population dependent and washout related parameters, we will be able to um, adjust our system to give us oscillations. Just to remind you at which point to, our path, to the path of our goal we are at this stage. We have modeled the full system, and we now need to characterize the parameters. For this, we build test constructs, and we want to go down to the way to characterize them. In order to break down the complexity of our system, we built three different test constructs. One was for the prey generator cell and describes the prey sensing part. We have two different test constructs for the predator generator, one for the predator sensing and one for the predator killing. For each of these, we have transfer functions from which we will be able to estimate our parameters. So let's now take a look at the predator sensing part and um, see how we were able to characterize it. For the characterization of the predator sensing part, we collected experimental data, as you can see here. And we were, um, in order to give you a better idea, we then um, have here the average with the variance. And in order to extract the parameters, we, uh, fit the trans we find the best fit of the transfer function to this data. So in the wet lab, in order to build these test constructs and also the biobricks for our final system, we had, um, we had the approach of building a ligation chart. The key point here really is that we uh, carry out ligations in parallel in order to be time efficient. However, during the, our time in the wet lab, we encountered some issues. One of these was that a crucial part of our predator sensing, the, of our predator, the AIIA, was non seemed to be non-functional. However, luckily, we were able to overcome this by obtaining this, source, uh, this um, gene from another source, but leaving us with a time delay. Learning from our experience, though, we introduced a quality control such that we would sequence every single biobrick after each ligation step in order to make sure it was correct. And now we'll hand over to Farah to give us an overview of our approach. Yeah. So if we recall the engineering cycle I introduced to you, um, this time in the context of our project, you can see that what it's really uh, afforded us is a systematic approach. And it's meant that at each step through the project, we've grown in confidence in being able to achieve an oscillator that fulfills our specifications, which I'll remind you um, quickly are um, sustainable oscillations for greater than 10 periods, a high signal to noise ratio, flexibility, modularity in design, and um, easy connectivity. And we're actually very close to achieving this. Our modeling tells us that we can achieve this oscillator. Uh, we have two of our three test constructs, and we have our prey molecule generator, which is, our, um, which is half of our final system. Our contributions to the registry, we feel, reflect our work both inside the wet lab and outside of it. We've, we're contributing to both the functional parts that we built and the intermediate parts that were used to build these functional parts. Uh, for, Christine touched on the quality control um, procedure that we included in our process. So for each of the intermediate parts that were built, they were sequenced, and for each of the functional parts that, that, that were built, they were sequenced, tested, characterized, and fully documented. Um, as a note, there's, we have a particularly favorite part of ours is the POPs blocker, which we really can't go into due to time constraints. And also, the sensing part, the prey sensing part, it's, it's not a creation of our own, but um, our contribution on that front is testing it in a different strain of bacteria. Our wiki was a really powerful tool for us this summer. Uh, we used it for open and detailed documentation of everything. So you can find out more about our parts. There's full documentation available there and about our oscillator and other parallel projects such as the POPs blocker and the biological to electrical interface can be found there also. Uh, we used it as a tool for communication within the group and to organize ourselves both inside the wet lab and outside of it. Uh, in using it so extensively, we have clocked up over 300 pages, so we invite you to look at every single one of them. Finally, a thank you for the institutions that have funded us and allowed us to be here today presenting to you. And a uh, special thanks to the list of people um, behind me uh, for their contribution to the project also. 
And finally, a thank you to your audience for listening to us today.